Hi everyone, welcome back into uh, the studio. We're going to continue some of our beginning lessons. Today what I want to do is paint this overlook. Now I got a photo, which I have right here, from uh, Adobe uh, Stock Photos, which I really like. But there was a couple trees here, and I took that out and going to kind of, uh, I'm going to change it. Well, you know me, I'm going to change it. And what I want to do is I like paintings that kind of draw you in. And so they're going to have a lot of atmospheric uh, depth to it. So that's what we're going to study today, using that horizon line, creating that atmospheric depth, and then creating a foreground that really comes forward. So we'll talk about that using different types of uh, tonal qualities of color, edges, and some of the brush techniques. So we'll bring that real way forward. So I want to create this overlook, and then I want to create uh, some... Uh, distant, like maybe even a distant little city over here, and some beach, and then back into some ocean. Now, to do this, what I'm going to do, I've, I want to create a little bit more depth, so I'm probably going to raise this up, the, the back horizon line back here, um, not quite to halfway, probably 40% or so up from the bottom, and we'll talk about that. Uh, light source here is coming in this way. It's going to be a lot of fun to kind of plan this and visualize it. I'm going to change these rocks around a little bit, and I'll explain that to you at why I'm doing it as we go, because you know I like to talk and explain things. So we have our uh, color wheel out there. For all you've been following along, you can get this over on paintitsimply.com. The links to everything I do is in the video description below, so you can find that in the colors. This is the, the uh, Heritage uh, six color set, basic set that I use with a lot of beginning classes, because I like to teach you basic of color theory as you're painting learn these qualities of these pigments and then we slowly through your painting career add other pigments and very soon you know a lot about paints and pigments. So we have Hansa yellow, naphthol red light, phthalo blue, red violet, black, and white. So those are the six colors we're going to use. I'm going to be using some fusion brushes, uh, old ones, even some. This is a fusion a round brush. I like this for doing like trees like we're going to be doing here. These this type of a tree and what I do is I just take it out there I hit it with a hammer to flatten it out and then I usually spread it out a little bit I just grab it and go like this and sometimes I'll take these and I'll cut out some extra hair and stuff like that you could also use like a a small bristle uh, will work in today too so we'll show you a little bit about the bristles and of course I do have my favorite larger uh, flats that I do like to paint with the fusion so the fusion is very soft the bristle is very very hard and it's going to give you a different quality to your edges and stuff that you, you paint with all right let's get into this okay so here's my board my board that I have here is 22 inches by 13 by 14 inches actually and you can make this even small this would make a great little painting as well uh, so you can make this any size but just keep it what we call landscape which is um, about one and a half times per uh you know long as it is high that keeps it a good landscape here uh, and that's basically all you need to worry about now so what i want to do is i and what it, this is just a regular board i've given it a coat of the canvas prep medium the heritage canvas prep medium you could also use just white paint all by itself i don't like i said before i don't like to use gessos because they they um they get a little bit slippery and your brush slides over. And I like to, when I paint all the Prima, I like my brush to grab on the surface. That allows me to get more uh, interest to my brush marks that I use. And I'll explain more about that. But I like it to be a mat. I like, I don't like it to be slippery. I don't like it to be sanded too smooth. I like the brush to kind of grab as I'm, as I'm painting. So that's why I use paint and not gessos. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to put down the horizon line. Now before I've showed you some simple ways to put down the horizon line, today, because you know what I do is I teach you guys all different kinds of ways, I'm going to teach you one a little bit different because we're going to paint for atmospheric depth. So what we want to do is we're going to take our reference photo and we want to find the colors that we find around here. It's a grayed violet. Here we're more of our blues and stuff in here. So they're going to go, if you look at it this way, it's a real light grade value 9. Make sure you have your value scale out here. And this is really a 9 right along through here. Value 9 grade violet. And then it's going to go through some 
uh, blue green bluish green colors from coming from the thalo and then back up to a darker violet and you can always hold the value scale up there and see and you so i'm right at the very top up there i'm right between a five and a six really close to a five okay but down here at the very base of it down here we're more of a nine you can see that that nine real close so we want to start with a real light grade violet which means a lot of white let's just pull our palette knife out here for a second we'll grab a lot of white let's also just add some extender here so this is my little cap of extender and i'm just going to reach up and grab a little palette knife of it put that in now what does the extender do i like it you see me use it and i tell you about it a couple of times where i like it because it makes the paint slide this will also keep the the edges of the paint wet for the the color that we put on here wet for just a little bit and I don't always use that because I like to paint with acrylics but uh, this will make for some of you that are beginning this will make it a little easier so add a little extender here and into the paint whip that up let's take a tiny touch tiny 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 touch of the blue here because we want to keep this value nine and thalo is very power powerful see how quickly that starts to change this into a blue Okay, and then a tiny touch here, just a tiny touch of our violet here. Because we gotta remember, we're working with value nine. So it takes just a tiny, tiny bit of the color here. And let's get just a tiny touch more there. And that'll be pretty good right here. And you can hold that up. It's not quite as grayed yet as what I have here. It's a real light, so it could go a little bit more violet. Now, the other thing to remember, remember I tell you, the acrylics dry one value darker, so this will dry a little bit darker. We could even, because that's a, a real nice mist, we can even add just a touch here, just a whisper of it, of the black to our, uh, to our knife here, and take that down this would be even this matter of fact if that's the color right there that's going to take that even closer just a little bit keep it around those knives remember it's going to be a little light but it's going to dry darker so that's going to be that color the light colors you know it's really easy to see some of the hue changes in the middle values your four five six sevens when you get up real light and when you get real dark it's really hard to see sometimes those differences but uh, just grab that now Let's put our let's take our big two inch wide. This is my old brush. I'm gonna fill it with some of this color, a little bit of extender, and I'm gonna start up about 40% high right in here, and I'm just gonna pull this color right across that area there, and we'll just go ahead and I'm gonna put it on pretty heavy right here. This is where my horizon is gonna be. I'm gonna pull it down a bit, and then I'm gonna let it kind of fade off here by pulling it up. Now, I don't like to pull too many horizontals. I like to do X motions. Those of you that paint the landscapes with me before know that that keeps the atmosphere into the sky here. So I like that kind of movement. Now, it's all one color, and you know, it's very wet. It's a very wet color. It's gonna stay wet here for a while. That's going to give us time to manipulate it a bit here. Now, let's come. So we got to go up to the top now, right? So we'll take a little white over here. Let's grab a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the violet. We said we were going to be between a five and a six this time. And it's going to be a bluish violet color right in here. So let's go this way. A blue and a violet. It's going to be a little darker than this, but again... Always remember, they dry a little darker. So you can see my color is what? It's a little bit green still, so I need a bit more blue, but I really need a bit more violet into that, that color. Let's come down here. Now you gotta remember one thing that those, if you're watching this for the very first time, watch some of the other landscapes, because each video I like to show you all different kinds of stuff. But remember, this photo I'm working for is printed with four inks, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. Okay, so basically when you look at your, um, on your palette here, this is your cyan, yellow, and your magenta. So you should be able to, with this limited palette, come really, really close to what these colors are just by training your eye. And this is what I like to always do with all of my beginners is start to train your eye. I'm still a little green, right? Still just a little bit, a little more violet than what you really think is up into that sky here. 
just a little bit more. And this is what I like. I don't like to mix it too much. Leave a little bit of like the blues and stuff coming through like this. This will get you a better color. See, now you're you're a heck of a lot closer to that color. And it's going to dry a little darker. So that's, that's a pretty good one to start. Let's just poke our brush into a little extender. Let's take this down here. Now we'll start up at the top up here where that color is going to be. And we'll just pull this X's and stuff like that. I'll pull it down. Now I'm going to lift the pressure on the brush and drag it down just a bit. I don't want to go too far because I want to sh uh, shift the hue. I want to go to more of a bluish green color here, which is usually what the center of the sky is. So you get towards your violets and stuff at the, uh, at the top of the sky. And so we can look at that and see we're capturing that look. We're starting to capture that look into that sky. But we want just little wisps of that bluish green in there, just a bit. And all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of my thalo, come right down here, grab a bit of white. I wanna make it lighter than this, and not as light as this is my original base right there, not as light as my original base. Let's just put a little bit of this color in, and let's just walk that right through here a bit, just like that and work it up into the sky a bit. Get this atmosphere as the, so the colors change. We'll get all these beautiful, see how that color just kind of changes a bit there. We'll get all of this on and then we'll cover it all up <laughs> with clouds, but it'll be pretty. So let's grab a little more light. Let's grab some of this violet that gets closer to what that background is. That first color we put on. And let's go back towards our lights right over here. A little bit more push just a bit of that on if it dries on you at all you can add some extender to it but that's going to be about what I want that to happen into that sky so it goes from the darker into some of this this will make these clouds look really pretty in here but it has some of that atmosphere and so that atmosphere just don't work it too many times if you work it too many times you'll lose all of these subtle little color variations and that's what makes the uh, sky so pretty when you allow some of those color variations. So there we have that and that works pretty good. Now let's just take some of this and some of this. We'll push this all together and let's go ahead and add in our horizon line. So to do this I'm just going to take my larger brush, my three-quarter inch here like this and I'm going to, I said I wanted, I'm going to touch it into some of this color here and I said that I wanted that horizon line to come up about 40% high so a little bit low of, of center and I'm going to drop that right in here like this and I'm just going to go back and forth a couple of times here just like that to push that in ever so lightly let's go just a bit heavier so I can show you something here so I'll go just a bit heavier here use more of the chisel of the brush here just like that. That's pretty good. And you can just flip this over. This is that little square I've told you I've made with the, got it, just went over to the Home Depot and grabbed one of their yard sticks and cut it and made a square out of it. Works really nice. Now what we want to do is I'm going to take some of this color right into here and I'm just going to work this along the edge here and pull down just a bit here, pull some of this color down. What we're going to be looking at here is the ocean here, okay? So, and I want to get, as you're doing this, when you, when you get a lot of interest when you're going to do the ocean or something like that, you'll see a lot of light and dark color variations in it. So you do want to have some variations of these lights and darks. That gives you more interest to it. You just don't want one solid color. So I want to concentrate on having some here that is, uh, you know, modeled around a bit here and variations to the color, okay? Now, we'll put this on. Let's just grab a few more variations in here and right back up over here. And then we'll start to walk this down. And when I walk it down, I like to have a little extender in it. That's what I like. And I'm going to walk this down a bit. And I like it, I like it very thin to get a little thinner. Now, I'm just going to start to soften this by just pull across here a bit, just like this. 
So now we have some subtle variations back there, but now what we have to do to get that is we have to create that blurred edge, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is take a paper towel, take most of the color out of my brush like this. You could even use uh, your big brush. A couple ways you can do it. You could use a small brush and a combination of a small brush and a large brush. Take my big brush here, maybe take some light in my big brush, a little extender like this, very soft color in the brush, not very much at all. And we're just gonna go with an X motion right across that to create that blurred edge. And every time you cross that edge, you blur it like that, see? And it's blurring that edge and it's gonna give you, help you get that distance there. And we wanna pull some down a little further so that edge almost disappears. So when you look at that, like right in there, see where that edge just, disappears there just a little bit, and that's what you want. The highs and lows are the disappearing edge, makes it look like fog and different things going on out there. So that looks pretty good in there. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just take a bit more of this color, thin it with some extender, and I'm just gonna walk it back down here. This will help me with my atmosphere of the, the uh, front of the painting there as well. So now, when you look at it, you've got some nice visual uh, differences of color and tone. Um, we could add just touches of more, maybe a little bit of the, the thalo right up in here, just so I don't get a band of, uh, you know, violet to thalo. And so I'll just cross these over like this and just add that increases some more of the atmosphere and that looks pretty good. Now, while we're doing this, and this is up to you, you I, you've seen me, I put clouds on later, I'll start clouds now. I don't always, ha I don't have to have a wet on wet to start a cloud, but you know, if I have it and it's really wet, sometimes I will start the cloud. So let's just take some of this gray color and to start a cloud, Last thing I want to use is white. What I want to look for is this color right here, which is almost our horizon color. So maybe just a touch more white, but a nice horizon color. And let's come in here. We're going to have that big tree right in here in this cloud. So I'll just grab a bit more of this paint. Step way back on your brush. That keeps the tip of your brush really soft. Little X motions like this and just start this is the base of the cloud this isn't the cloud the perfect cloud this is its base so we want this real wispy little edge here okay and we'll build it some more but we want to just make sure we capture this wispy edge and then we'll come out no more than halfway here and leave this leave real wispy edges there we can build we can build a little bit more up here into the center. This is where I'll start to push more paint. And, but you see, that, that, let me show you this. This is one reason why I love acrylics. And you know, when I was an oil painter for so many years, it became hard because I'd come in here and I'd set this. And it seemed like every time I touch it, it just starts to disappear like that. Now there's ways around that, but with acrylics, what I do is just let it dry a bit and then it softens it. So I, I reduce the pressure on the brush by stepping way back on my hand. So I have just a real light touch here and I'm just gonna leave some of this wispy movements like this into that cloud area like that. And we'll have a, a few of these up over here, some high cirrus or clouds or so right up here. And I'm just gonna whisper through. These aren't the perfect clouds yet. These are just an idea where the clouds are gonna be. There'll be a bit more right up over here. Just kind of push them on. Then pinch wipe your brush a bit and then just pull through. Now, if yours, if yours is dried and you don't have that kind of working time or so on it, then you'll just, you'll paint the clouds in two steps. You'll let that, go ahead and let it dry, put on a light coat of that blue again. Doesn't have to be very much. Then don't try to redo the whole thing. Just a little bit of blue to soften it into and then work your clouds again, okay? So it doesn't take very much, but let's build like this one a little more than what they, they have there. So see, I create that, I wipe my brush, step way back on the handle of your brush and just pull through lightly 
and create the movement of that cloud right like that, see? And we could have a, we're gonna build a little bit more over here onto this side, right up there like that. So I usually will pull like this if I wanna create some what we call linear perspective to the clouds. When we start studying that, we'll do some more. But, uh, <clears throat> on, but most of the time I like to use little X's and stuff like that. So you can see I get a little lighter, a little smaller into the center of the cloud. We whisper a few little marks down. That creates other little clouds or ideas of clouds there. Down along through here, I was thinking I might, I might put in a bigger one on the reference photo. There's a little bit more of one built right in here, but it'll have some violets and stuff into it. And so we could actually, you know, when I build big clouds, and you see me on other paintings, I build big clouds, I'll start with darks as well. So I would come in and put the darks, but these are real thin kind of uh, clouds, wispy clouds being blown around by the, the winds today. So they're not going to be real heavy clouds. So we're just going to paint them kind of wispy. So I put on a little violet sometimes and I'll come in and just tap in some heavy, heavier color right in through there. Just apply the color, just like this. Just push the color on. Try not to make the same mark. Move your brush around so you're making different edges, different marks. That's what makes your clouds pretty. See, so all those marks are different. Then I pinch wipe my brush. I step way back. We can add some very light movement here, just very light, barely touching the surface there. And uh, we can move this cloud around and give it a, a little more interest, a little bit more movement here. Maybe uh, just a touch of it moving back here like that and just soften those edges just a bit like that. So, but there's more, there's a lot more we can do. We could build this one up a bit more like in the photo, but I think that will, that's enough to really kind of start us out for this painting. You know, we'll, uh, I'll show you some other fun things later on, but we just create this wispiness, okay? All right, so we've got our nice blurry horizon line. Could blur down a little bit more in a few areas there. Just like that. That's going to help us the most with the depth. Allowing a little bit of it, but then seeing it and allowing it to disappear, that's going to help us the most. Now, let's come in with a foreground color, and then we'll go in and paint the midground. So we're going to come in, usually with the foregrounds and stuff, darker colors advance. So you can see right in through here, your darkest colors in, in because our background is our sky. So the sky is very light up here is a nine. So as we go to the other end of the scales, down to your threes, fours, around in there, these are really going to help it advance. So we're going to look for kind of a, a, a reddish yellow color here that is going to be around, and that's right where that is, a value four. So it's going to be right around a value four that will start this foreground. So this is all good color. Let's just hang on to this. Push this right up here. It's got extender in it. It's going to stay nice. We'll use that if we want to work on the sky or the clouds or something like that later. Or sometimes I'll paint trees and I'll back paint it out, make sky holes into trees. So we have that color there for that. Let's go over here. It's a, it's a reddish yellow. So let's grab some yellow, some red here. Now, how do we tone this? We could use the blues. Uh, we can use a tiny touch of black. What we want to do is take this, we want to take this reddish yellow right in here, and we want to go into the, into the wheel here. So even the tiniest little touch of black will gray this down. And you could also do it with the blue. You could go grab some of this blue and take it this way and gray that down here. Maybe just a touch too much blue here. Don't need that much but see any of that the blacks black is great and if you're an artist see the black is just a little bit different tone than what that one is there but see all of it is that tone see all of it all of this together will make a beautiful marking of that of this foreground so let's take some of this maybe just a touch of black over here with this and touch of blue over here and even some of this little violet in here this is all going to be good color Good marks. And let's go up right about in here, right about into this mark, right about in here. 
and you could use your ruler or so to make sure that you're getting kind of straight. <laughs> Let's make sure that's not too wonky here. Yeah, oh boy, that's not too bad. A little higher right up over here. Let's just kind of pull that right along there. And uh, so that's going to get some. Now I want to kind of push some of this color on here. And I want it to be fairly heavy. And I want to keep my marks, though, not precise and perfect. We're going to push bushes and stuff like that in there. But I don't want to be precise. Let's grab a little blue. Even a little bit of that red violet, black, some yellow. Just keep it with that, you know, toned yellow orange is color in there. Let's just grab some of that, pull that around. Pull some of that, just let various marks. Don't try to do just big long marks, various marks. Let's get a little more yellow here, right up over here. See, I like it when a bit of that red just kind of comes through there. Now a lot of this will cover up because we're going to put all kinds of trees, bushes, and all that kind of stuff in there. But that gets us there. Now as we come forward, the really the more forward co color is more of a reddish gray. Do you see that? That's in the photo there. And I do like that. So we can get a little red, a little black here, some white. Let's start taking this up. It's got to be slightly on the reddish side, reddish black, reddish gray. Let's see where we are. And so it's, I'm just a touch yellow. Do you see that? Just a touch yellow here. So a little more red, just a touch. Let's see where we are. That's a lot closer. I could be a little bit more, even a little violet. A little cool violet would be nice in there. A little yellow and violet. In here, this will all make real pretty colors. Let's get a little lighter because it's going to dry a little darker. Let's put some of that on there and see where we are. I'm just, just a touch red, and it could be a touch tone. So use your, use your tools, use your photos, identify the hue. This is kind of reddish, kind of reddish violet kind of color, a lot of yellow in it. Then get it a little bit lighter, and if it's too bright, grab some gray. This is good color right in here. And uh, let's get that a bit lighter, just a bit. Push that right in through here. Okay, that's kind of pretty. A little bit more, grab some of this other yellows and reds. So you get some variations. Remember those of you who painted the seascapes with me? We love to get that variation into the sand and stuff. So I'm a little bit same right over here. So I'll take some of these yellows push that in, maybe some lighter color, work that in there. We're just going to want this to be, and this is a real, real good spot. Those of you that, that paint with me before to want to see it, I usually will, when I'm painting for all the prime and a lot of interest, this is where I grab my knife and I'll just start pulling through. Now, I'll start pulling through some of this other color that I have up here as well, and see this, the working of the knife, let's even grab some of this blue, because that's just all good stuff. See, that just works those colors, and you don't make as, you won't make as many mistakes with like a brush mark or something like that, but you'll create this, this interest down there that you want to grab, and like in that lower part of that painting, that's what we want to grab. So usually when I'm painting like this, like all, and you can use your knife to help you pull down the color so that you don't keep it, so you don't get it too dirty, that kind of stuff. But I like those colors down. The black for the grayness of it, the uh, red and the yellow and some violet here. But see, these are all, and this is what I like, is when I'm painting a lot of real a la prima, this is what I look for right in here because it's kind of all the tones that we want to use. And I grab stuff like this, and, I, and I'll move it through like this. And so painting with a large uh, paint scraper like this is a lot of fun. And sometimes I'll grab my uh, paper towel and pull it through. And I'm looking at edges, colors, movements. That's what I'm looking for is I want to get some of these different kinds of edges here and movements of the colors coming forward like this. So I don't get like a, a straight across mark. I look for this kind of movement happening in there like 
that, so I like that. We'll push that around a bit. There, see, that's what I look for, is you get these highs and lows and some of this. That's what gives it a more natural look than sometimes just pulling across with a brush won't give you that look. Now, you can build on top of it or soften it with a brush. That all works, but, uh, you know, that's, that's all up to you. Let's take a reddish orange. Again, back here, get back a little bit of violet, back towards that darker, a little darker here, reddish orange. So we'll get not perfect, we'll get close to what was, so we're, I'm looking close to what was there first time, right in there, that dark, right in here. And I'll push some more of that on. And usually when I'm, and that's where I like that little spark of yellow to come through there. You know, usually when I am uh, working like that, is uh, or working a painting, especially up in the foreground, I'll work these colors several times, and I'm building up paint, building up textures, which helps this whole painting advance off of the uh, off of the the, the uh, surface here. So let's just grab some of this shadow. There's some shadows right over here that it's on this side because. The sun's coming from left to right in here, so we'll just work some of these shadows in here, some of these marks, darker colors right in there. But having little touches, this is where it gets fun, having little touches of some bright sunshine kind of colors in there too work nice. So what you want to do, especially for you beginners, is you want to get, this is what you're looking for, some of this, that's all interest within the painting. That's what we're kind of looking for, okay? And, you know, we'll, we will work for that and build that, and sometimes it takes two or three times working through the colors to get it. So, you know, I may work this ground again, and sometimes I like the ground to dry up a bit, and then I'll work it some more, all right? So, so we got some of those colors. Now, what we want to do is take some of these colors and we're going to go, if you look at the photo, it's got some greens, but you'll see those colors again. See them back in here? See those colors back up in here. So I'm going to start there and what I'm going to do is take some of these colors, lighten them up because as they go further back, the atmosphere lightens up the color. So we'll lighten them up. We'll atmosphere them up. We'll take some of our blue atmospheric kind of colors, but we'll lighten them up some of those nice, these kinds of tones. We'll lighten them up and we're gonna push them right back up in here, right into some of this wet blue. Let some of that blue stick here. Do some different marks here. Get some different workings of these colors here. So they'll pick up some of this into the distance here. Little marks of this color, boom. You know, pick that up a bit. Sometimes a little heavier, sometimes more misty. You know, the atmosphere is changing some of these colors just a bit, okay? Now, if you want to create a beach or something, you can take some white, a little bit of yellow, come down over here, lighten that up even more, a light kind of a yellowish little beach color here. And you can come back here and push in a little bit of light. Sometimes I let a little light just tap like that and it looks like a little wave line or something right in there, see? So I just tap it lightly, which push on, puts on a little bit of the light. We'll just pull through, let's soften that one just a bit. We'll leave this disappearing line right there for the edge of the ocean or something. And we'll grab a bit more here maybe right up here like this. Now you can have, you know, a, a beach that kind of comes and goes and disappears and stuff. If you want to get that light little tap, just touch into this like this. Just push your brush into that like there. Don't load it up real, real super fine and just get a little light. And you got to kind of let what happens happen here. There we go. That's a nice little one right in there. And I like the unevenness of it. Now, sometimes I'll pull these down just a bit. Sometimes I'll pull them further down like this. Sometimes across. You'd want to, you want to get some verticals in here. You just don't want everything to be horizontal because it'll start to look stripy. So you want to get some verticals in there 
as well. Okay, so that that's pretty good. That that look that looks pretty good. Let's grab a bit more of this. Now as we come this way, we can get a little bit darker. Right in here, just a little bit. We don't want to go too dark right up to the, the top color of our front here. We'll grab another paper towel, but we can get a little bit darker, just a bit. So we're, as, as you come forward, you're gonna get a, a little bit darker here. Boom, just like that. So basically this sets the start of your painting. You set the darkness of your colors and you head towards that particular color. That's what we're doing. So we'll, we'll get a little bit more of an edge. And we've got to get some greens and some other colors in there to make it look like other stuff's going on. Matter of fact, let's just go grab that green. Black and yellow makes a good greenish kind of color. Black and yellow, you could have a tiny, tiny, tiny touch of blue. Not that tiny. Tiny touch of blue. Get some of those uh, greens happening in here. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna push it on a little heavier and a little, just push back and forth with this fusion. This will give you a natural look to some of those colors and stuff happening in there for this edge. I know it looks a little crazy right now, but it, uh, what I'm looking for is I don't want anything too, too stripy, too perfect. I want these edges to be very, very rough. Now, I can set the distance a little bit more just by pulling through like that and softening out that distance. But what I'm looking for is all of this variation. I don't want to paint it too much because I'll lose some of that variation. And so artists will sometimes just take their brush and tap it around in here like this to get some of that variation of those colors and tones, which is gonna make it look like different trees and different things going on back here, which is what we want without, uh, you know, destroying the depth here. So we gotta be careful not to go too dark, Dave, here. But I want some of those edges right there like that. That really helps this little beach kind of stand out there as well here. And you can, you know, on the photo, there's all kinds of stuff going on. And usually in a simple painting, I simplify stuff. I, I don't put all of that in. But a little bit of this might be kind of nice. Right in there like that, some of that. And you can, you know, visualize it like little trees, uh, you know. So you could take some of this, maybe a slightly different green here. Slightly different, more yellow, more yellow green, kind of like that. And this is where a small filbert also comes in. You can take that and you can start building little colors here, little touches of greens and other marks, other types of marks. Let's go a little more blue and black here. But other types of marks that you see, you know, into the painting, like maybe this is some distant trees back here. And, you know, as they get further back, you just see the color, the mark. You don't see the, the actual, like a tree or anything like that. You see the mark. So we want to have just some color more than anything else. Little color marks. Variations of those color marks there. Right up like that. And softer, they be, the edges become softer as they go back there, so soften it. But this starts to uh, build maybe some trees, some greenery, some other stuff going on. And keep it simple, we're impressionists now. We're just painting the impression of some of this stuff. So we don't wanna get too carried away here. Just the impressions of it. And you can, Let's get this grayness. Now sometimes I'll pull at a slightly different angle, set up a different plane. So basically what's most important though is your colors. Your colors and everything that you're doing in here have to become softer and softer and softer as they go back. If you find a mark there that's a little too much, just push it. This is where I like to use my finger and just push it a little bit because that will soften it out here 
and will preserve your depth into your painting. See how that helps that depth into that painting there. So, but in a, in a lot, you know, um, of paintings, we'll have other little things, other little lights and darks. And so usually like when you're painting like this and I'm doing something like this, I will do it many times back and forth. Change the colors up a bit here. Change the tonal qualities of the colors up a bit and start making some smaller little marks like this. You know, that could be emphasizing like little buildings or other little things going on. You know, Impressionists will, would come in here and even touch something like you'd see in the photo there, a little light. Or what I do many times is use my knife and I'll come in here and pull in some marks. Now, you see, you want to you want to pull in, when you're doing stuff like this, you want to pull in the idea, the idea of something. You don't want to go in there and paint. You don't want to come in here like this and paint a straight building be, or something like that because that'll be too much. So you, what you want to do is just take some of these colors and some of these tones, maybe a small little edge of something tapped along there, but you don't know exactly what it is, and so you start building this. And what I like to do is do put some of that color on, and then I'll take some of it back off with some of the other colors that I have, and I'll start painting back and forth like this to create this, this depth here. And it could be soft little gray colors that you're putting on here for other little things, and then take some of that out, push it on, take it out, here, push some of that on, little colors, push that on. And so as the Impressionist, we would start, let's get a little more of these grays and these lights. And so you may come in here and just grab, push in some lights like this, little marks. What's that gonna be? It could be a little building, could be something else out there in the distance. Then take some of your colors set back some of those edges push the edges look for horizontals verticals little marks little touches and this starts to build your little city back here <laughs> little bits here little stuff going on let's get a, a little darker maybe a little red here into some of this graze this up and Grab some of these marks, colors. Grab a mark. See, I try not to, I love painting this with the knife. But, you know, you try not to, uh, try not to blend all of that out. These little marks are so important to the impressionism. That's what you're painting. The impressionism of what you're seeing here. You're not painting it exactly. Just the impressionism the impression of what you're seeing. Let's take some of that light here, push some of that in, push in even some yellows in there, some, some horizontals, some verticals here. There we go. What could this be? An edge of a building or something like that there. That could be you know, it could be a lot of different things. You just want to suggest. You don't want to paint. You want to suggest here. Let's grab some of that color. Let's push some of that on there. There we go. See, that knife just paints that so nice. Now, what we got to do is, let's come up here to the front. Let's grab some blue. Let's grab some yellow, a lot of yellow, a little bit of red into that. We'll get a mottled color of the greens right in here. Let's just come right up in here. And so this isn't dark enough yet, but it's it's a good start. It's a just an idea. Well, let's push some of this right along this edge. Because we're going to want it, because in doing some of those darks into that mid-ground like that, we destroy our depth a little bit, but so that we know that we have to come back in and add some of that depth. Let's add a little black into this. And how do you get that depth? You get that with your darks, right? You get that with your darks. So let's come back in and let's add some of those right along that edge. That's gonna be there, okay? And 
if you find that it, again let's just say now this is going to be fine but let's just say i wanted to soften back in there i could take my big brush and just pull lightly across that right right like that see and soften out some of don't soften it all out but soften out some of my marks which brings my it my depth back because it as you blur the edges, you push in it back. So you look for just blurring some of those edges a little bit. Not all the colors, just blurring some of those edges. And you start bringing some of the other parts of the painting here forward. Let's grab some more darks and yellows here, right up here like this. And let's just get a bit more of the bushes here. So I'll use different parts of my brush. This is my little number eight, which I do like to do a lot of painting with. Here. And grab some of this. Push it on. We'll build it uh, up a bit more for a bush here. But as now, as I start to get a lot of paint and uh, that becomes more difficult, actually more difficult to paint as you build more paint. So it uh, is something that where I like the acrylics, I'll let them dry a little bit and then it becomes easier. So this is now, I've got a lot of paint coming on here and so I have to, to really get it to stick, I have to lift the pressure of my brush. Well, I don't always like to do that. So I will let it dry, but you can lift the pressure on your brush, but uh, Sometimes I just let it dry here. Now we're gonna paint those rocks and stuff up there. So this is where I would look. And so uh, with this, I'm gonna wipe some of this color out of my brush, maybe grab a little bit of this light color into my brush. And I can come right back here like this and just soften a little bit of that, where that, those two where my foreground and that midground is gonna have an exchange and I can start bringing that foreground farther forward if I want to. Let's um, grab what's a, what's a good brown. We said this before, red and a little bit of black makes yourself a good starting brown. And then I like to sometimes add some yellow to it. So we'll get a good starting brown. Even a little bit of this green might be good in there. And let's just come up over here. Now we wanna come up maybe a little bit higher now down up over this side and I want to I want to come up higher than that disappearing line of the edge of the uh, um, the distance here because I want to create this where it's pulling your eye in here and if we set a vertical here and a vertical here that's going to channel the viewer right up in through here so we'll just pull this down matter of fact let's just do that real quick grab even some of this green in with that and this will, this will become our big rock over here, right up over here onto this side. And that's a good start of it right there, those colors right there, okay? And we're gonna add some to the other side over here. Let's grab a little more yellow. We're gonna add rocks all along and through here. Maybe a bit of our dark, a little green and black with that, nice little dark as well here we're going to add them right up through here all kinds of colors right up through here but all this will help my foreground start to advance again because as i start to paint some of that interest into the midground it takes my it takes my uh, foreground and kind of kind of uh, destroys that whole depth of the foreground so i'm bringing it back now little yellow and red and black here even a little bit more yellow here some of these we're gonna grab some of these rocks right up here color edges it's all color and edges and movements here I'm just kinda seeing some of these colors and I don't want to lose all that I like that this is a little too smooth right here I want to break those edges so these will all become eventually rocks and stuff up here in the front. Some of our shadows right around here where that tree is going to go. Right up here. There we go. And uh, sometimes I'll just take some of that light. 
See, this is where I like the painting back and forth. So this is what I really like. See, you get to pull that across like that, and then I can take this brush and manipulate those edges. I use the, the big paint scraper to put on an impressionistic idea rather than with the brush, and it gives you more of a natural edge here, and then I will uh, use my brush to kind of take it down a little bit. So sometimes I'll do this. See, that's the edges that I like, right like that. See, that's a natural, that's a more natural edge right in there like that. Just use that scraper, push that along in there. And that's a more natural edge. And then you can come in and manipulate that a little bit to adjust it with your brush. And that's the kind of edge that you want to have, okay? So let's, um, let's come in before we get going here too much. Let's just take, I'm gonna use a little bit of extender, some of this nice dark color that I have here. Let's plant our tree. Let's bring our tree in. Let's bring the wide body of the tree. Let's come up about here. Okay, right up about here and we'll pull this kind of up and down and around and right down in there. Okay, now that's lost some of the color there, but we'll get it back. We're professionals. We'll drop a little more dark right in there. Let that come in. Okay, now let's, it's gonna go up little bit past halfway kind of going right up here like this and then we're gonna let it just kind of fade out so I let my brush I lighten the pressure so my brush starts to skip and then that's gonna give you more of a lost edge here let's come out like this let's put that V in here go more to the chisel of your brush lighten the pressure it'll start to skip out here a bit which is what I want we'll draw it now if you get too much on them, we'll just paint it out with a little bit of sky here. Right into those V's there. I don't like to have perfect edges. I like their edges to kind of uh, have fractured edge. You know, they're, they're broken, fractured. That's what makes the trees the prettiest. Let's bring one using just a chisel. Set your brush down like this. Pull that down, that's a little heavy there, so I'm just gonna back it out here a bit with my finger, back and forth, and see the blue is the blue is still wet, so it starts to take it off just a bit. And you can see really right there the difference between a found edge and a lost edge. This edge, you can't really see it. And so you can see the, the front edge here really starts to come forward here because you see it more, to see more of the edge here there we go and let's bring another one a little further out we'll just drop some ideas a little further out here and like that sometimes I'll just take my finger and kind of whisper join them together let those edges start to fade out there like that might be a bit too far into that cloud so we just pull it back here and now as we get to the smaller ones you know like your little bristle this is where I said a little bristle filbert or a smaller round or not you can use a round or a little chisel or something like that that starts to allow you to do smaller stuff and smaller branches and stuff through here so we'll start some of those. So before in trees and stuff when I do them, you see me start the back of the tree and then add in. I add in, um, you know, the branch. I, I add the back of the tree, then the mid ground of the tree, and then the tree trunks, and then the branches and stuff. And this time I'm starting out with the branches. This is because I'm building the skeleton of this tree. And I will put some branches and stuff over, I mean some leaves and stuff over it and bring the branches back. Sometimes it's when you're drawing, sketching, it's it's kind of nice to put the skeleton in of the tree and then uh, that'll give you a good idea and then you can start filling it up. Now, I have one problem when I paint trees is I tend to make the darn branches too straight and I don't want to do that. 
So we want some of these little ones coming out, bending in all different kinds of directions here. And I want those lost edges and stuff. Now, okay, so that, that gives you an idea of the skeleton. The, the actual, you know, photo or reference has a, a bit more going on. We might increase that V shape. It has a bit more going on, but that's enough for right now, I think. And we can decide later on if we want to have some more. Now, let's work on the tree. So what do we do with the tree? So with the tree, we want to, you know, this is a, it's really in the foreground. It's a lot of contrast to it. So we don't have like the, a, a soft lost edge like you do with a maple or, or an oak or something like that. So the edges are, you know, on this little pine or cypress, I guess it might be, is um, going to be not quite, I mean, going to be a little more harsh. And it's going to be kind of a yellow, dirty yellow green. So let's take that. But we want to be I'm going to add some extender to this because we don't want this to be super heavy. So I'm going to start this out. This is like around the value four or so. Yeah, four to a three, maybe even a little lighter. So a little more yellow, a little more white. You can even add a little sky that softens that out. This will be a good idea for us for the softness of the tree. I'm going to use my, my eight here, just the corner like this. And I'll drag it, set it down flat, and roll the brush some different ways so I get this, this edges here that are quite a bit different. Now, the, uh, you can be more precise and come in there and, and uh, you know, with a smaller brush and everything, but I like doing it this way. Sometimes I like to do it with a knife. I love the painterly look to it. And so sometimes I'll come in a little heavier, which will take out some of the sky which is what we want here. And I'll build this tree like this. I'm gonna go quite heavier up over here, almost completely opaque in some areas. Then just whisper out the edges. And I don't wanna make, I don't wanna just come in there and make a blob. I want these edges to fracture, which is like this. So I'm lifting that pressure on the brush just just barely, lightly hitting the surface there, like that, okay? So now, the question is, I made my tree too big. <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys how not to do that, no. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm just gonna take some of this back. That's gonna leave room for that cloud. So I wanna shorten this tree up just a bit. And sometimes when I do this, and it's not really a mistake, it's an opportunity to redo some things, is I will uh, leave some of that color out there so when the sky comes in, you just get a really nice harmony to it. So don't take it all off if you have that. Leave some of it. And let's just build this up and around here. Right up and around like that. Build those edges of that tree. Let's take this part out right there. Now see what a lot of what a lot of artists do, and I'm one of them like to do this, I'll take some of that blue and stuff that we have and I'll paint my edges back in like this. And I like to do this. Let me take a little bit of that green out of there. So I just have some blue. So I always save this sky again. But it's when you're painting like this, if you're an Ala Prima artist, and see I like just a little bit of that tree to climb up into the sky that color and that is that traveling of the color of those edges is what makes your your painting so artistic so pretty so let's just go ahead and let that happen then we'll put the cloud back in I'll show you so we'll let this come right up over here and come down like that a bit okay now let's go back and push that light cloud back in here that we had Paint it right up against the edge of that tree. Let your edges cross just a bit, see? Let them cross. That's where you get that natural painterly look that I love in paintings. And I'll let those edges kind of cross. That's what gives it that real painterly look. And we can, so I'll let those edges there cross. Now, I can come in here and build more of the cloud right like this and you know, harsh, make the edges of that tree a little bit more uh, harsh or push a bit, you know, and that's what I'm looking at is these edges that are right up there. 
And that is a very painter, what we call a painterly look to it. In other words, it's not just tum 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 tum. Put the color on. You want these crossing of the edges. You want your your colors to to change. That is what uh, you know what a master artist does. Is they look at those tones and these colors and see we'll cross a bit here. And we'll take some of that out just a bit and see see how very painterly that whole area starts to look up there. See? And that's that took me so many years to understand that. And I can continue to build this back and forth like that and build that cloud back up where I want it. Back up here. I want that cloud a little heavier over here. So I'm gonna build that up a bit more. Right up right up into the tree, because then I'll put the tree back on and I'll I'll paint it back and forth like that a few times until I get until I get the look that I want. So now, see, I'll take my tree and I'll come back up right up against the edge of that and maybe leave some of the the edging of that tree, some of this right in here. Sometimes I'll let that cloud come through. Pick it up. Softer edges, heavy edges. Let's put in a little more color here, like this, okay? And build this up, leave some of those sky holes here. Build this up, let's just grab a few little light wispy things out here on that tree. But don't be afraid to paint out, put it back. Let's grab a little bit different darker color here. The darker color, I start to think of shadows, where the shadows are in the tree, in the each mass, each mass area of the tree. So when you look at the tree, like there's a real mass area here, I have a light side, which of course the light's coming this way, so there's a light side and a little bit of the dark side coming over this way. And some of these little wispies that are out here will be a little bit darker here right out like that. So we'll have this as the shadow side. But see all the colors now that are coming into the tree. That's what makes it pretty. Is you got all those colors going in there. We'll have a little bit of the shadow over here onto the right side of each one of these masses. A little bit of whispers here as it comes out of each of those areas. Right like that. Okay. And so that's not too bad. We can get a little more mid-ground greens. So a little more green, a little more red, slightly different color. That's what makes them pretty. Let's push some of that up here a bit as well. Now this edge, I gotta decide, and I think I'm gonna leave the, you know, in the photo, it's very much an edge, real crisp edge. Now it's what do I want to do? See, that's very painterly. Very much, actually, Dutch masters would do that. Um, they call it illuminated edge. Um, do you want to make it more harsh? It is It is a good area. These are all decisions that you make that in your career that will set the look that you have as an artist. I could set in a little bit more clarity to a few of these edges right up here, colors, edges, that will bring this part of the painting forward. But a lot of contemporary artists leave their edges softer and broken, more so than what you would see in the actual photo reference or a painting. Uh, they like the more color movement across the edges, and I do as well there. But uh, And you could do this also, take some of these edges. This works really nice if you want to Pull some of that across with your knife here. That works really well. Smear it out a bit. All of that works really nice. See that color, all that depth of color and everything in there. That's what makes it pretty. You know, you get that difference. Let's, um, I'm going to put out, I don't like running low. And, you, and the yellows, well, that's a new one. Let's grab one that I already had open and put some of that out here. Maybe, here we go. Put out a little more yellow here. 
There we go. Get some of that. Let's get this a little bit more yellow up here. And if you want to get a completely different look, let some of this dry. See those colors now in there, see? That's what makes it pretty. Now this tree I really kind of want as a focal area in here. Let's get a little more lighter yellow. So I want to get some of these colors, these tones in here, you know, working like that. And get this nice warms, nice yellows, yellow green. So Hansa, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue here, but quite a bit of Hansa there. There we go. And we can get some uh, more red and blue and black, whatever that brown, which is red and black here. Take that over here, add some of this green, I mean yellow to it. And you see you get these orangey greens and other greens. All this is just good color. Get some of that in there into this tree. Some of these marks here. Let's build up a little bit of this color in here. Leave some of that sky hole in there. Sky colors in there. Okay, in other words, don't take out all your background. If you do take out your background, this you can even use a smaller or a different brush. Let me just reach over here and grab a different brush. Grab a little sky color and a little bit of blue and paint backwards, paint out. So put your, put your little sky back in like that. And so, you know, if I wanted to come back up here and reduce this edge a bit, just tap around. This is very, uh, it's a very good thing to do because see what it does is it puts more life and energy into that tree. And so we call these sky holes and you can come back in here and just touch a little, a few sky holes into your tree and that just lightens the feeling of the branches and stuff like that that are in there. So if you feel that you got your tree a little heavy. Now, you know, a good tree painter will paint a heavy area and a, and a light area, but you can come back like this and just paint them in there and they, and they work. Okay, so you can always, don't just take it off, you can go back in and paint it off. You're an Ala Prima painter, we can do anything we want. So, let's take a bit of our darker and work that right in here into this edge of the tree here. This is shadow falling down the tree. A little reddish brown, a little bit of blue here. We'll push that in. Now we'll, this other tree has it a little more defined right there, so I'm gonna do that. A little bit more defined, so remember I said I can bring these branches back out here as well. That's up to me, that's my tree here. And <clears throat> this has, I think, I got the, I think I'm going to add a, another one right down in through here and bring that in. That's up to you how much, where you put them and all that kind of good stuff. We're just going to paint a nice tree. Don't try to copy that tree, it'll become really stiff. When I try to copy, I get them all exactly the same and I don't like that. So, I mean all of the branches moving out the same. So I just kind of use it for inspiration. Do your thing. You now, if you want to, if you want to get more of a, a, you know, perfect little branch, thin your paint out. Thin paint. This is a good tip. Thin paint flows better than thick paint, and that allows you to do detail. So, if you want to get some detail to some branches flowing out there, thin your paint out, and it'll flow better, and it'll give you more detail. Okay good little thing to remember. So if I want to get some teeny tiny branch detail in here, just use the chisel of my brush and some thin paint, pull through, and you'll get a little bit more interest and stuff like that to it. Maybe uh, another little mark of a broken branch coming out here like that. Okay, so, and down, like that one has, that has you could use your liner brush and drop in a few extra little things, but I like broken edges. This is what I like to do afterwards, is I like to break the edges 
so my tree is not perfect okay and so I have those there I could use some of this dark back up over here onto the dark side of this tree played with that too much and lost some of that color I really liked a little bit more red and blues the red and the black make the brown and then you can change it slightly green a little more yellow and black you can change it slightly orange yellow and red but the big thing is that yellow it gives you all the variety of the green so we'll push in a little more variety here to our greens by more yellow and this is a good one for you to do get all these greens in here get all those greens variety here let's make this a little bigger over here take some of that off see I like those blurry edges that just helps you a lot here maybe a bit more yellow yet maybe even a touch of white a touch of red touch of green right here that's a pretty color right there roll up light and just hit a few areas here let's go a touch more light just hit a few this is the sunshine area just hit a few area pockets or little hits of sunshine there onto that tree there and uh, then what I do like to do and I don't always do it but I do like to come back in and push a little more shadow I like to paint back and forth between the light I just don't like the light to sit up all the time I like to take it out sometimes with some dark that's what I like to do. But you will be a little different. You will, you know, you, you paint along, you paint the ideas, then you start finding your way through some of this. And that's what we do. So now let's just take a little yellow, red, a little white, some of these, it gets us, I wanna make a light tan, which is the red and black here and then some yellow and then some white there we go that's a nice color right there that I can use here onto this tree trunk to add just a touch more of interest to it sometimes I'll just tap it here and there there we go just a little bit of interest there to that maybe a on their other tr on their photo, these trunks right in here are a little thicker. My tree's a little weaker, <laughs> but that's okay. I like my tree. And I'll add a few more little things going on there. Now, so over to the, so we got an idea of a pretty good looking tree. We can do some more, maybe some more light right down here. And this is where I like to hold my brush kind of flat like this, you see, and it puts in those marks, you know. There's a really fun one where I painted uh, some of these eucalyptus kind of trees, gum tree kind of things in the south and uh, of the church, the southern church. If you haven't painted that one or watched that one, go look at that one. Those trees are really fun to paint. And let's just take out some of that white, white right there, right in there. Get some of that marks on that tree there like that. Okay, so... We're gonna come in here, let's uh, get out a little bit more of our white here. And we're gonna come in, I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna grab some of this color, some of these nice colors. And usually when I do stuff like this, this is what makes beautiful rocks. And I'll look, I'm kind of greenish, so I'll add some red to it. You know, I'm gonna to head towards my browns, my tans. That's what I see in these rocks, is these browns and these tan colors and stuff. And uh, so I'll just grab some of this, but I'll let some of this green, not that much blue, Dave. We'll let that, uh, that green and some of these colors come through like this. This is all good color. And I'm going to start adding that right into my rocks over here. We'll add some of that right down in here, right down like that. We'll add some front. There's going to be some front rocks right up in here. We'll add some of that. So I'll do it with a knife. I'll do it with uh, 
brush I like to add because each mark is a little different and that's you know for those of you that are beginning learning to just see that little bit of red I'm gonna leave that there that's fantastic and those of you that are just beginning uh, learning how to vary the marks is the most important thing that you can do as an artist you know so um, so we got that so now let's come back in let's lighten some of that up now we're going to paint the three planes of a rock so right up here this is really going to be kind of a light plane then we're going to have I'm really kind of got the the uh, the shadow planes in so I'm going to put a little bit more of a light plane that's what's shown in the reference photo right up here this lighter plane but I'm going to leave a bit of that fractured edge there so I'm going to go with the lighter plane. So I'm going to go up around the value 7 or so here. And I'm going to start assigning some, some light planes. Now the light is really kind of coming from the top left. So I'm going to keep the light here more to the left. And I'm going to simplify these rocks. Basically three planes and simplif simplif simplify them. <laughs> can't speak right now. Simplify them into a light shadow um, and receding plane. So we'll we'll even put a rock right up here into the front. I mean, see, I have these. Now my left brain will start hitting me here, and I'll make all of these exactly the same and ex all exactly the, the uh, same distance. So I'll have to fix that. That's just that, and then I'll create. Uh, some mid-ground and then some shadow. So I'm going to come in here with some of these rocks just first with the color. And a lot of times when I'm doing a lot of rocks out here like this, what I like to do is just start putting the color down and then I, like when I, you'll see me when I paint some of the river rocks and scenes with the rivers, I'll just start putting rocks around, rock color around like this, and then I'll start to come in and draw the rocks with the shadows. That's what I really like doing. That works really well for me and, and what I've discovered that I like to do. So I'm going to put some of this light on here first. That's step number one. So let's bring some of this light in. We're going to change these rocks up from that, from that uh, photo a bit. So, but I will drop some of these faces in. Get some of those rocks in, right like that. That'll be good. We'll make a few, a little bit more yellow, maybe a lighter rock right here. A nice light rock that climbs right up here by the front would really help us with our depth here into the painting too. So I start to plan some of that kind of stuff, you know. Now what I do is I'll take some of my red and my black, which is going to be my darker brown, maybe a bit of yellow. And then I'll vary this sometimes a little blue, a little green color. But this is good shadow rock color. So when I what I do next is I start to come in and I start to divide up the space for the light and the shadow of the rocks here. And... So sometimes you'll get a little more red. So I have the light side. Just opposite the light side is going to be the shadow side. So I'll start that. And so I can shape the rock here with some of the shadow. And then what I do is I come right in between the two with the mid plane, or what we call the receding plane. And I like to use a slightly different, like here I'll pull down. So I like to use, like to use a slightly different mark so here I put on the side and then the shadow came across here so here I'll pull down a bit and create the receding plane let's lighten that front plane up a bit more here like that let's get this a bit more here a bit more now you know how much you know, what makes a great painting is how much time you're going to spend in doing something like this, you know, in, in building these kind of areas and getting, you know, rocks. We talk about rocks and broken color and we, you know, I've told you all about different ways to get 
broken color, putting different, like you'll have greenish browns and reddish browns and yellowish browns, bluish cool colors and stuff like that. That's going to be up to you how much time you put into painting your rocks, but they're going to have a light plane, a shadow plane, a receding plane. So I concentrate on the light plane here. Then I'll come in shadow blue and red. Thedal blue with quite a bit of red and it makes beautiful grays as well. Beautiful gray colors, especially into the shadows of the rocks here. So I generally will put in the light and the shadow and then put in the, the mid plane of the rock and I'll just start painting them. So I go to light, shadow, and then the mid plane. And most of the time with the mid plane, if I'm doing just really simplistic rocks, these are simplistic, very easy. So I usually will put like the light plane that's, that is perpendicular to the light. So that's where the light's hitting across that plane. Then the shadow plane is on opposite it. And then I'll pull down, just pull down for a real quick receding plane to give the height and the base to the rock here. And that works pretty nice. It's a quick way to do some rocks here. So let's put a bit more light and warm. And I'll just keep building until I start to like the contrast that I see into the rock. So I'll start to go a little lighter here. Let's put in a little different tone of a receding edge here to this rock. Here like that, a little bit of that reddish kind of tone. Maybe a nice, almost like a burnt sienna kind of tone, which is more of an orange, toned orange. Let's get that in there. So you tone the orange with a little bit of blue and you get those beautiful burnt sienna tones like I'm just putting on there right now. See? And we'll come up here and strike that real light plane up here again. Tap that around. And as the good rule of art is, as a color gets lighter, the area in which it occupies, it's called the law of disproportionate color. For those that are studying color theory, you know that. Law of disproportionate color, as a, as a color gets lighter, the area in which it occupies gets smaller. So you use less of it. And that's really important. That's all part of the this whole thing. But as you if you want to paint really pretty rocks, you start getting those broken colors that you know broken color it has about the same value, but you use it as kind of oranges, kind of greenish, kind of bluish, you know, like some of the sky color here would be really pretty tossing some of the sky color right now into some of those rocks. See that sky color? Picks it up. It harmonizes your painting. You're an artist. Think about harmony of your painting. Pulling some of that sky color down like this. Dropping that in. Let's pull in some more receding color. See? And I'll, I'll paint that right over there. So you see a little bit of that blue in there. And look what that starts to do for your rocks. You know what this starts to do? Nice things for them. And you just keep building and building and building here. Light colors here. Let's build this area up. Let's build another little ridge line of light. And then I'll, you know, I'll come in and with some dark, let's take some of this dark especially you want to get especially up here in the front you want to get some of these real darks because that's your that's your contrast here in these four rocks here and you know when I started painting rocks and it just seemed like everything I was doing was would look a little bit wrong and then people come up and say wow those rocks look amazing and I go Really? <laughs> because you don't know, because you just start painting in there, and sometimes you just don't know. And change color, change tone a little bit here. Pull down, receding plane. But, uh, you know, as you, you just keep painting them and keep painting them, and they'll start to get better and better. And 
You, some can be more round, different shapes. I'm a left brain, so I have, the problem that I have more than anything else is I tend to make all my rocks exactly the same. And so you, I do try to concentrate on that. See how I pull this real flat so I get some different looks to some of those rocks there, you know? And that's what I want. Grab different colors, try different things. Pull some different angles here. Let's pull some shadow down this side a bit more. Here. There, like that. I really want to pop this foreground forward. So I really want a nice bit of light right there. Especially right up there. Nice little edge, nice little bit of light. And that's going to pull that forward here. And see, the more I'm working on this rocks, the more paint, the more light color, dark colors, the harsher the edges, the more the whole foreground here is starting to come forward. Do you see that? And that's the work. This is where all the work's done. Is right up through here like this. This is what brings it all forward. Then we'll put in some of these bushes and stuff here as well. Let's put in some smaller little guys up front. And then what we want to do is we also want to have some, we don't, and again, that's my darn old left brain. I love the paint, but man, I, I was a better chemist because I could figure out forward and stuff, but I, you know, my left brain will just make a straight line all the way across like it's starting to do. And so I want to make sure I get some other smaller ones. So I put on, and this is where I like to do it. Again, I like to put on the, the light, and then I'll draw on the shadow here, what the shadow side is. You can see the rocks start to come forward here just a bit. And then I'll come right between the two maybe a little bit of that burnt sienna kind of color with right between the two values and pull maybe down like this and that gives you a nice receding plane and a real quick look to a nice little rock, see? Right like that. That works. Lighter orange. Put some of those oranger colors in there. Let's get just a bit of those. Get those colors, see that, that little bit of yellow-orange right in there. Kind of a pretty little color. And this is where, you know, how much time, this is, becomes, how much time do you put into your, your painting here? You know, and it's gonna give you, uh, you know, that, that realism that you might, you might be looking for. Let's go with a good yellow, olive green kind of yellow black with a uh, yellow with a little bit of black let's reset some of the shadows here of some of these bushes that are right in there we wanted to say let's go a little more shadow now you can as you head into the, sh the shadow side here too don't forget you can add some blue to that too or violets violets are really pretty as well you know so Let's get a bit more of that. See, your first colors, you know, that you put on, I'm just going to take out some of this rock, let some of this sit over the rock. Your first colors that you put on, um, you know, are your ideas. And, you know, some people say, well, you, you know, you put that on, now you painted it out. Well, your first colors are there to help you visualize it. And then as you see it, then you start to refine it. Does that make sense? Don't be afraid to ever paint something out. That's your creativity coming forward. Let your creativity happen. You know, paint out stuff. I do it all the time. You know, my first impression of it is not always great. So I, I give myself the freedom to paint it out and do other things. So here I'll just drag in some of these other colors right in there like that. That works pretty nice. Um, I'm going to take some of this little blue and some of these grays make a little different lighter color over here on this rock tone that one down just a bit I do like that light though that might be too much yeah I like that light 
The thing is, get different shapes in there to these rocks. Get some different shapes. And, you know, if you're, if you're painting all of Prima, which is one of my favorite, is I, you know, I give myself a time limit to paint these things because I'll play with them. But, you know, you uh, uh, give yourself this time limit so you move forward. And because sometimes, you know, a quick painting is a prettier painting. So, and let's add a little of that red violet. I haven't used that very much in this painting. Oh man, I need to. That's pretty. That really gave contrast. Boom! That nice cool dark right in there. That really did nice stuff there in that. Really helps it come forward. We need a little bit of that cool dark right up in here into that tree on that side there. And that's the big thing. I think, you know, as you get, as you, as you uh, work and as you paint more, you become a better artist as you start to use more tones. And the fear of using those colors goes away and you'll become a better artist. So, let's just grab that edge there. And see these rocks, I like them to like them to do different things, slightly different colors. Let's put kind of a bluish gray one right in here. And different look. Let's take some of that cooler color. Push that in. There, like that. That's kind of pretty. Yeah. Now we're cooking. And so I got this kind of greenish color. See, I add a little red that neutralizes it, right? I get this nice little brownish. That's a pretty color right in there on that one. Use slightly different marks, different direction. Try different things. You know, just, you know, you, it doesn't hurt to try. Push little things in there. And, uh, you know, I like this brokenness to the to some of the ala prima, to some of those rocks like that. I like that broken. And you know, if I was going to put a lot into this painting, I'd do this several more times. See how these colors, see little marks here, just add so much. And uh, so I would do it again and again, and they would add quite a bit to your painting. Let's take a half tone or halfway, pull that down, little receding plane there. Widen that light plane back out again here just a bit. There we go. Yeah. A little different than the this, this sample, but you know, I like to do that. I like to use them. I like to kind of start putting colors on the rocks and then just kind of reading them a little bit what I think they need as opposed to following too much with a picture because then it just doesn't look as natural. I like I like the more natural look of, of applying the colors and just and you can't go wrong by just you know breaking it down to the light, the shadow and uh, you know a light color, the shadow color in it and uh, show you the light color plane and then uh, join them both together with a little bit of a receding plane. So here's a receding plane and I'll just pull down slightly and I'll join some of that together there with a receding plane there and it just makes it look like more things going on in the rock here. Edges and stuff. This swoopy line right there kind of bothers me a little bit. So I'll take a bit of shadow. I like to draw with shadow. I'll just break that line up here a bit. Right there. And then we'll come back in. We'll add the light playing here. Maybe a light playing right there. There we go. And um, maybe a little bit of blue in the grays here for the sh 
shadow side or receding plane there. And but what really makes the rock, let's just go a little dark reddish brown here, really makes the rock is the shadows. I like to draw them with the shadows. So I'll just draw a shadow line in there. You can make fractured lines in the rocks, you know, where they're cracked and stuff like that and start adding some of those details. You'll see that I explain that a lot in other videos and stuff, but if you're a beginner, just concentrate. What I want you to concentrate is on the three planes of the rocks. The shadow plane, the receding plane, and the light plane. And make sure you use a little bit different brush mark with each one and you'll get a, a nice look to your rocks there. Okay. Now, we have we got a few more things to do, but I'm going to take some real thin, maybe light, little bit atmospheric color here, and I'm going to pull through and flatten some of this out just a bit, so that will soften it just a bit and get me some some additional depth there into. Uh, my painting here. So, and it's nice and dry now, so some of that really works nice. A little bit of blue. Let's just pull, so I'll have this plane, this rock and that plane going slightly different there, see? That's nice. And what really gives you a, a lot of depth into it is like if I have this, Let's thin this out. This thin, kind of smoother color here, pulling right up against this dark shadow side of this rock, see? And so this rock really comes forward and the shadow side doesn't. So we can do the same thing like right over here to establish some of that depth right back there. On that side there. And just take a little bit of shadow, a little bit of shadow, thin it out here and just lightly go over this edge here color edges be a little bit more crisp and that will bring that rock further forward see so we could have a little bit more of a crisp edge right in here that would help our depth right there and bring that rock forward and you start looking for something like that see we could take the dark and some of this dark here and redo some of our shadows here, a few little bits of the shadows, the bushes here. Drop some of that around. Grab some lighter yellow, maybe a bit of white, some of the sky color, a little bit different blues. Just drag that over here. Give an idea of little things. You could do it with a smaller brush here too. You know, any kind of smaller brush. This is that little bristle. And just start dragging a bit. Little edges, little marks. There. I like that look as well. Just drag it with the bristle. And it creates little wispy bushes here. Grab a few of those lights up into your trees. Let's um, come right up here. Let's grab some white, some yellow. Let's get brave. A little reddish, a little bit of violet-y kind of color here. Gray it just a touch. Don't mix it up too much here. A bit more yellow. Here, let's pull some of that right across here. See, it's slightly different color, slightly different tone. Let's bring this forward now. This is the contrast. This is what's going to bring it forward. Get brave, try it. Pull it through and just slide your knife over some of that here and let some of that ground start coming forward here. See? And that's the, you know, when you get powerful like that, that's what, that's when you really start to be an artist. When you get over some of the, the fear of doing that, you know, and you just go in there 
and you attack it with those colors and push some of that around, that's when it really becomes pretty. And so I could take a little edge of that with the corner of the knife back here. And if I wanted to have that little beach surf and stuff back there again, I can push that in. And see, that really helps that kind of like that little beach back there pop up a little bit more here. Just a light little bit of that color. Not very much of it, just little bits of it. So I put it on my knife. See, I pick it up a little bit on my knife, so I'm just the edge. But it's a little wider, so if I, I can use the edge, or I can roll my knife down to make it wider, or roll it back up and get a little chisel. That allows me to change. Let's try to keep it out of the tree. Change that up. It gives me a, a little bit more there. We can... Pull some of that right down onto those rocks. That's just real pretty, get some of those colors. And this is the knife painting part of it that you could, I mean, you could see the knife here is quite a bit more casual and gives a lot more broken edges. So some of you are gonna like that, some of you are not. So, you know, but that's up to you, you know, how much you're gonna do. But look at the edges now in these rocks and how much they start to come forward here. I'll push and soften that receding plane there. But you can really see those rocks start jumping forward now. And how much you do, well, that's up to you. You know, that's, uh, that's your call as the artist. What do you want to do? Let's just grab a bit of this right up to the front. All the way up here. Make sure you pull some down. Don't get so much into the horizontal. You need some verticals. Pulls down some with the vertical there. Let's get uh, a bit of the shadow in there as well. And then it's just how much you're going to do. You know, it's all back up to you. Let's get some of that shadow. See, that's where I like that, that ground. I like the uh, ground here to have this interest. And I might take a, a bit of this light and uh, just come right up against the edge there like that. It's a little mound of dirt or something there. Pull it back. Sometimes I'll push it to create a slope. Remember we talked about slopes? To create a slope there. But I do like to like touch little edges and you know, give little, the sparks, you know, we talked about that, the sparks of color whenever you're painting something, little sparks of edges, just brings a little bit more realism to it. Let's put a touch of light back into this rock, maybe into that one there just a bit. So get a little, you know, a little bit more. Now, if you find this is too much, see, there's a, let me show you here. You can paint out, just real quick, you can paint out, start taking your ground back to create more visual interest. Like I'll create this little spot right here. Take a little shadow, and I'm gonna paint back and create a, uh, pull down a bit, pull across a bit. So it's not a straight line of rock. So now I created a visual, break in my line of rocks. Just, just all kinds of stuff you can try here. That is just fun. It just makes it fun. But that's all up to you. Now, and you can put a cast shadow over here onto this side if you want. You can see that into the, the photo, but that would be any kind of just violets or dark, dark reddish brown kind of cast shadow back up over here from the idea of your tree. And just let it climb up over this rock a bit because that's what will happen here and so you can just and then that always helps you with your light but an hour and 45 minutes we kind of played around with that one a little bit but hopefully you get a little bit of an idea about setting some depth back there now I might raise that back up they're just a little higher though I do kind of like that and then you can come back in and you can take some of your light color after some of this is dried and build that cloud up a little bit more. I like to use just some water or a little bit of extender 
and see that will really pop up the edge of your tree you can use that to lightly you know build a bit more of a cloud back up over here you know if you want just drag that around I'll leave a dirty a little bit of dirty color in my brush so that I get some of that interest but you'll see in the last one different ways to do clouds start finding some ways that you might want to do clouds but you don't have to do very much because most of the softness of the cloud is in so what you want to do is just bring out some of the light areas of the cloud just a bit more here some light just a touch more of the light and create some of that wispiness of the of some of this back here maybe a little edge back up along like that and just pull that through just like that just a little edge and you got that okay it's really a lot of fun so there you go i'm going to be releasing quite a few videos this week so watch that the, the western will probably be coming tomorrow or the day after and uh then we've got a uh, animal portrait and we have another portrait to do and we have more flowers to do so keep an eye we're going to release probably about three videos almost four videos this week they're coming okay so hopefully you enjoyed this and let me know some of the things that you want to see and we'll we'll make sure we get that we have also i want to do some more moving water studies for you beginners with some of this limited palette okay all righty we'll uh, give this a go okay and uh, vary your marks try your marks vary your marks and i'll see you guys on the next one two days one day see you then